Hello everyone and welcome back. Let's continue our discussion on backsplats. So in the last example we looked at a backsplat with days on the x-axis and total bill on the y-axis. Here you see the days go by order from Thursday to Friday, Saturday and then Sunday. We can also use another attribute known as order and then pass the days in such an order that we want. For instance, if I want Saturday to be first, we can do that. Let's see how we can use the order attribute. So we have SNS and then we'll, we'll call the backsplat method. For our X axis, we'll pass day. For our Y axis, we'll pass total bill. And our data comes from the tips data set. And for our order attribute, we'll pass a list in an order that we want the days to be present. For instance, if we want Sunday to be first, we can do that Sunday followed by, let's say Friday, and then Thursday, followed by Saturday. We can do that. So if we run it, now we see that Sunday is first and then Friday. So whatever order we specify here, we will see that on our backsplat. That's the order attribute. And to change the color, we can pass the, the palette attribute and set it to, let's say, HUSL. Let's see another example of the order attribute. Let's start by calling the backsplat method. And then for our x-axis, let's pass six. And then for our y-axis, let's pass tip. And data comes from our tips data set. So let's first see the backsplat for this. So here you see male comes first and then female. For that, we can pass the order attribute and then pass the order that we want. So female and then male. So the order will be reversed. Let's run it. So now we have female and then male. Okay. That's the order attribute. Next We'll consider the iris data set and see some backsplats. Let's start by loading the iris data set. So SNS that load data set and we'll be using the iris data set. And let's save this in a variable called iris. Now if we call our iris data set We have sepal lengths, sepal widths, petal lengths, and petal widths, and of course our species. So let's plot a box plot of our iris data set. So SNS that box plot, and let's pass our iris data set and see what we get. So if we simply pass our iris data set, this is the box plot. We have sepal lengths, sepal widths, petal lengths, and petal widths on our x-axis. And we have the actual lengths on our y-axis. And let's pass the palette attribute and use some other colors. Let's say cool warm. That's what it looks like. And Let's take this and pass some other attributes. One other attribute that we have is called orient. And by passing that attribute, we can control how the backsplats are oriented, whether horizontally or vertically. So let's pass that. So orient, we can set it to be horizontal or vertical. Horizontal 
for instance and run it you see now the back splats are oriented horizontally here we have sepal lengths sepal widths petal lengths and petal widths on the y-axis and the actual size or lengths on the x-axis and we can change this to some other color let's say hsl run it again okay that's the hori horizontal orientation so we pass the orient attribute and we could have passed so horizontal or just h that will also give you the same result so since we have a horizontal orientation we also have a vertical orientation let me show you that so for vertical orientation we simply pass vertical or v and let's run that and see what we get so here is the vertical orientation so by passing this orient attribute we can control the way our box plots are presented whether vertically or horizontally okay the next thing i want to show you is how we can show each of our data points on our box plots for instance here we have a single box plot there is a way to show each data point combined with the box plots for that we'll be using a method known as the swarm plot let's see how we can do that so we have our box plot method that we have seen and let's see a box plot of day versus total bill so we'll have day on our x-axis and total bill on our y-axis total bill and our data comes from the tips data set for our palette attribute let's pass HUSL so on top of this box plot method we'll call seaborn swarm plot method so swarm plot and then we pass the attributes that we have for our box plots so for our, for our x-axis we'll pass day for our y-axis we'll pass total bill and our data comes from the tips data set okay so make sure you have both of these methods in the same cell otherwise you'll get separate graphs separate plots but we want both of the data points and the box plots to show in the same plot so let's run the same scene so here we have our box plots and then we have data points for each of our entry okay so a single point represents a single data point okay and we have that for each of our days variables and there is another attribute known as color by passing that attribute we can change the color of this swarm plots let's see that so i'll copy this paste it here and then we'll pass the color attribute for this attribute we can pass a number or simply state a color for instance let's say black so here we have black as our data points for each of the data okay or we can use a number we can pass a number value for our color attribute let's pass a value of 0 0.35 and see what we get okay we have a grayish kind of color okay you can <coughs> you can try out different numbers let's say 0 0.12 okay 
So the lower the number, the darker the color. Let's try 0 0.6 maybe. And you have lighter, a lighter color. So you can change those different attributes to get the color that you want. Okay. I'll just pass 0 0.15. So this gives us a nice comparison of each data point on top of our box plots. Great. Just to summarize, we looked at box plots in this lecture. We saw that we can draw a single box plot for a, a single variable, or we can do the same for two variables. We can pass a hue attribute for our box plots to get more information on a specific hue. We also saw that we could pass the order attribute to change the order of the variable we want to be presented. And finally, we looked at how we can control the way our box plots are presented by passing the orient attribute, whether horizontal or vertical. And we saw how we could draw data points on top of our box plots for our variable. Great. Thank you, everyone, and see you at the next lecture.